Why is integration so much harder than differentiation? For elementary functions like x to the power n, or sine of x, and e to the power x, we know both the derivative and the antiderivative. And both differentiation and integration are linear operations. So where is the difference? Well, for differentiation we have the product rule and the chain rule. These allow us to compute the derivatives of products of functions and compositions of functions. For antiderivatives though, these rules do not exist. And this has some big implications. For many functions, an antiderivative even does not exist. There is some hope though. The product rule and chain rule for differentiation do translate into two rules for integration, integration by parts and the substitution rule. How does that work? Well, in this video, we'll start with the second, the substitution rule. So what does it do? The substitution rule converts one integral into another integral, so it does not give you directly the answer. However, the idea is that after the substitution rule, the second integral is easier than the first one. So when does it work well? It works particularly well if your f of x is of the following form, some function of u of x times du dx. So let's see an example. If we have this f of x over here, for example, then f of x is basically the square root of some rubbish, x squared plus 1, times the rubbish, 2x. So in this case, when your function is like the square root of rubbish times the derivative of the rubbish, in those cases, substitution rule does work really nicely. Well, how does it work? And why does it work nicely in this case? Well, let's take a look exactly at this example. So what do you do? Say we have some rubbish, the square root of the rubbish, where the rubbish equals u equals x squared plus 1. Then we choose a new integration variable, u equals x squared plus 1, and we uh, uh, substitute everywhere, uh, we replace everywhere the x's by the u's according to this rule. So the square root of x squared plus 1 will become a square root of u. But we'll also have to take care of the dx. We do so by the following. We compute du dx. We basically compute the derivative of u. Well, u equals x squared plus 1, so du dx equals 2x. And then we find du equals 2x dx. Well, isn't that convenient? This entire 2x dx is here and here and becomes 1 du. So the integral becomes 2x dx becomes du, and the square root of x squared plus 1 becomes square root of u. So we have a new integral with the integration variable u now, but instead of this long function, we only have to compute the antiderivative of u to the power 1 half. And that one is standard. And the derivative of u to the power 1 half equals u to the power 3 over 2 times 2 third, plus some integration constant, of course. And then we substitute back uh, u equals x squared plus 1. So there we have our uh, antiderivative. Always good, of course, to check if here you have your antiderivative of a capital F of x. You can check whether it's correct by differentiating it. So we differentiate, we get a 2 third times the 3 over 2, which cancel out, times x squared plus 1 to the power 1 half, times, using the chain rule, 2x, which is indeed our F of x. And now we also see why the substitution rule is kind of the equivalent of the uh, chain rule, because if you go back, so you have your antiderivative, you go back, uh, to, uh, and if you compute your uh, small f of x going back, then you need the chain rule there. So that's why it's reminiscent of the, sub, the, of the chain rule in uh, differentiation. Well, let's do one more, relatively easy example, e to the power 2x, uh, which is not in our list, however we can use substitution u equals 2x, then du dx equals 2, so du equals 2 dx. Uh, well, we uh, need dx, du equals 2 times dx, so dx equals 1 half du. So here we get 1 half du for the dx, e to the power 2x becomes e to the power u. Uh, we can take the 1 half in front of the integral, and then we have a new integral, and this e to the power u is on our list. We know how to compute its antiderivative, it's just 1 half e to the power u, 
plus some integration constant and substitute back you get one half times each power 2x plus integration constant and again if you check whether your work is correct compute the derivative of the antiderivative so we compute the derivative of e to the power 2x that's e to the power 2x times 2 which cancels out with the one half so uh, capital F, F prime equals e to the power 2x which is indeed the function small f of x where we started with this so this is how the substitution rule works you find a new variable u you find a new integral and hopefully your new integral is easier than the first one you started with.